Hello, hi, and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Sarah, and this is Wicked Reading. So today's video is a little bit later than I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be up probably last week, um, but here we are. So today I'm going to share with you guys 19 new horror releases that are coming out between April and June. So the second quarter of 2024, there's some really interesting book releases coming out. I'm not necessarily anticipating or excited for all of the releases that I'm sharing today, but I wanted to share a few more outside of just the ones that I personally want to read just so you guys maybe find a book that you didn't know was releasing and you want to check it out and then you can let me know if I should check it out. But I did pick out ones that I am somewhat interested, not necessarily interested enough to go out of my way to read it, but interested enough that I want to talk about them. So I'm going to keep the synopsises very brief. We're just going to get a little vibe for what the books are about, but I am going to read them because I cannot remember 19 books that I've read, let alone 19 books that I haven't read. So we're going to start off really strong with a book that I am highly anticipating. I actually already own it. I am going to read it. I can't wait. And this comes out April 2nd, so it's already out by the time you're seeing this video. And it is All the Fiends of Hell by Adam Neville. It says, a handful of scattered survivors are confronted by blood red skies and an infestation of predatory horrors that never originated on Earth. And occupying four intent on erasing the remnants of animal life from the planet, aka alien horror. That's it. It's an alien horror. I'm so excited. I've read from Adam Neville before and have given him a three star and have given him a five star. So I'm really excited to read this one. I've been wanting to read more alien horror and there it is. Coming out on April 4th is a book called The House at the End of Lacian. Street, maybe that's how you say that. And this is by Catherine McCarthy. I have read from this author before. I read Mosaic by her. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. So I would still be willing to give her another shot. So it says, Claudia Dance boards a bus at midnight. Destination, Lassian Street. No luggage, not even a coat, despite the icy rain that penetrates her clothing. Like her fellow passengers, she has no clue as to why she is leaving. In fact, she remembers nothing about her past. The answers she seeks can only be found in the red brick house at the end of the road. But the price she must pay for those answers is substantial. So it's really giving us not much. So it like piques my interest even more because it's just very mysterious. I'm assuming that this is a short book, like a novella, because that's what her previous work is. Um, and it just like is very ominous and not giving much away. So I'm just kind of like curious about it more than anything. On April 9th, this one is a more well-known one. So you guys have probably heard of this one, but S.A. Barnes is releasing Ghost Station. So in this book, psychologist Dr. Ophelia Bray has dedicated her life to study the prevention of ERS, e a space-based condition most famous for a case that resulted in the brutal murders of 29 people. But as they begin to establish residency on an abandoned planet, it becomes clear that crew is hiding something. And then their pilot is discovered gruesomely murdered. Is this Ophelia's worst nightmare starting? A wave of violence and mental deterioration from ERS? Or is it something more sinister? So it's pretty much a horror taking place in a space station on an abandoned planet. Uh, it sounds good to me. I've heard very mixed things about S.A. Barnes previous work, Dead Silence, which I haven't read, but um, mostly because I've heard so much mixed stuff. But this one piques my interest. I do actually have an arc of this available to me through NetGalley, so I might just read it through that arc. But the idea of space horror does pique my interest. I think that that sounds pretty cool. So hopefully it delivers. This one is one that I'm very interested in. So also coming out on April 9th is Grey Dog by Elliot Gish. So this is described as a subversive literary horror novel, which I love literary horror, that disrupts the tropes of women's historical fiction with delusions, wild beasts, and an uncontainable power of female rage, which like, 
did they make this book for me? That sounds so great. That sounds so amazing. I really like the cover too. It's very intriguing to me. And that just like, oh, that sounds so good to me. That It takes place in 1901 and it sounds like it follows a woman kind of through a transitional period of time. And she's also riddled with grief and shame from her past. It seemingly has a lot of themes that are themes that I really, really enjoy in stories. Literary horror that specifically ties in feminine rage, the feminine experience, the female experience, that just literally ticks so many of my boxes and I love it. It even mentions as her confusion deepens, her grip on what is real, what is delusion, and what is traumatic memory loosens and Ada takes on the wildness of the woods. This is definitely one that I will read. I don't know when I will read it, but I'm gonna read it. Next up we have on April 16th, Indian Burial Ground by Nick Medina. This is actually the author of, uh, what's it called, Sisters of a Lost Nation, I wanna say which I didn't read, but I heard a lot of positive things about it. The tagline for this new release is, a man lunges in front of a car, an elderly woman silently drowns herself, a corpse sits up in its coffin and speaks. On a reservation, not all is what it seems in this new spine-chilling mythological horror. It says, Naomi wants a fresh start and to move off her reservation with her boyfriend when her boyfriend supposedly takes his own life. But the facts about his death just don't add up and Naomi isn't the only one who suspects that something menacing might be lurking within their tribal lands. After over a decade away, Uncle Louie has returned to the reservation bringing with him a past full of secrets, horror, and what might be the key to determining the true cause of death. Together, Naomi and Louie set out to find answers, but as they get closer to the truth, Naomi begins to wonder whether it might be best for some secrets to remain buried. I am really interested in this one. This is one I'm going to actually own, not because I necessarily went out of my way to buy it, but it's going to be in one of my horror subscription boxes. Since I will own it, I will read it eventually. Next up, I think that this is an indie author, but it sounds really interesting. So it's going to probably be a little bit more difficult to get your hands on. You might have to buy it right through the publisher. I'm not totally sure, but it releases April 16th and it is called Lord of the Feast by Tim Wagoner. Wa Wagoner? Wagoner? I'm not totally sure, but the cover is pretty wicked. So that piques my interest. And it says, 20 years ago, a cult attempted to create their own god, the Lord of the Feast. The god was a horrible, misbegotten thing. However, the cultists killed the creature before it could come into its full power. The cultists trapped the pieces of their god inside mystic nightstones, then went their separate ways. Now, Kate, one of the cultists, children seeks out her long lost relatives hoping to learn the truth of what really happened on the fateful night. Unknown to Kate, her cousin Ethan is following her hoping she'll lead him to the night stone so that he might resurrect the lord of the feast and this time Ethan plans to do the job right. Then on April 23rd there is a book called The Day of the Door releasing by Laurel Hightower. This is actually another one that I will own because it's coming in a subscription box for me that I subscribe to. So this one is pitched as the Haunting of Hill House meets Head Full of Ghosts, which that alone piques my interest. I absolutely adored Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. Haunting of Hill House, it's been a long time since I read that, like pff, at least 10 years. So I don't really know how I feel about it having that combined with it, but the head full of ghosts sold me enough. It just says, three grieving siblings confront their manipulative mother after learning of her participation in a popular paranormal television show designed to dramatize the most traumatic day of their childhood. And the cover I really like, it's pretty wicked too. And I'm really excited for this one. And this is a novella at 228 pages, so it'll be a nice quick read. Also on April 23rd is a release called The Redemption of Morgan Bright by Chris Panettiere. So this is listed as a dark fantasy horror, and I think it's going to be kind of like gothic feeling. So it says, a woman checks herself into an insane asylum to solve the mystery of her sister's 
murder, only to lose her memory and maybe her mind. And it sounds like it's a mixed media type of story. It says it flips between POV of both Charlotte and Morgan, which I'm assuming are the sisters, and then there's police interviews and text messages. So this one piques my interest. This is one that I, I think that I will eventually get from the library at least. I probably won't go out of my way to buy it, but I will see if my library gets it and eventually read it. This feels like maybe a November read for me, more of a fall time read, so we'll see. So that was everything for April. So moving into May, one that I'm very much anticipating, and I have it as an e-arc, and I'm going to read it this month actually, is Supplication by Noor Abi Nakal. So this is coming out May 7th, and it is described as a hallucinatory literary horror novel set deeply in the consciousness of a woman exploring a changed and frightening world. It says, our protagonist comes to in a basement tied to a chair with a man looming over her, but someone has a knife. We follow her as she emerges from captivity into an unarmed, nightmarish city seeking some meaning in her new reality. As figures emerge from the night, some offering sanctuary and others judgment, she keeps moving, making her way through this fever dream of a narrative, which is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be a fever dream. It sounds like it's going to be confusing and like it's going to be very much up for interpretation and be very ambiguous, which is something that I love most of the time, not all the time, but this sounds really good. I'm really excited to get into it. Next up also on May 7th is a novelette, which I love the cover of this. It's like simplistic, but I love it at the same time. Same with Supplication, I didn't mention. Really like the cover for Supplication too. But also on May 7th is When the Devil by Emma Murray. So this is actually only 66 pages, so it's very short. And all it says is Libby finds salvation in a new sapphic partner, home-brewed poison, and facing a god she no longer believes in. So my interest is really piqued by this one. Um, and since it's so short, I'm sure I will read it, but it kind of depends because 66 pages, I don't really want to buy, uh, you know, like a physical copy of that in case I don't like it. I'll see if my library gets it, but I don't know since it's not a very, you know, highly marketed or widespread anticipated release. We'll see. Maybe it'll be available on KU or something. That would be really nice but that's on my list. Another one on May 7th is called The Z Word by Lindsay King Miller. So this one's very different. It's definitely much more of what I'm thinking is gonna be like a horror comedy where it's not really actually horror or scary, but it has zombies in it. So it, it says it is packed with action, humor, sex, and big gay feelings. The Z Word is the queer zombie land you didn't know you needed. So. It sounds like it'd be a fun time. I'll keep this one in the back of my mind if I ever feel like I want something lighthearted, but I wanted to throw this on the list too. On May 14th is a book that most people probably already know about, and that is The House That Horror Built by Christina Henry. This is about a single mother working in a gothic mansion of a reclusive horror director, and she stumbles upon some terrifying secrets. She starts hearing noises from behind a locked door, noises that sound remarkably like a human voice calling for help. So, I haven't read from Christina Henry before. She's a very popular author. I just haven't really gotten around to any of her stuff. I think that this will probably lean way more into thriller. I have a feeling that the most horror aspect of this is probably that there's a horror director as a character. I just, I feel like this is going to lean a lot more thriller. Um, I probably won't read it, but it's one I'm very curious to see what people's reviews are of it. If people really, really love it, maybe I'll give it a go depending on what people say about it. So this is one that I will keep my eyes out for, but I probably won't pursue myself. This is another book with an absolutely stunning cover. The cover alone makes me want to read it. And it is called My Darling Dreadful Thing by Joanna Van V, or it might be Johanna. I'm not totally sure how to pronounce this author's name, I apologize. 
but this cover is so good and it's definitely giving gothic vibes. So it says, Ruse Beckman has a spirit companion only she can see, Ruth. Strange, corpse-like, and dead for centuries is the light of Rue's life. That is until the wealthy young widow Agnes Noop visits one of Rue's back room seances and the two strike up a connection. Soon, Rue's is whisked away into a crumbling estate Agnes inherited upon the death of her husband where an ill woman haunts the halls, strange smiles drift through the air at night, and mysterious stone statues reside in the family chapel. So, yeah, it sounds very supernatural ghost gothic, which isn't necessarily my thing. Um, but this cover really makes me want to read it. So, this is one that I am definitely going to listen to people's reviews about and kind of make my decision from there whether or not I read it personally. But, wow, the cover stunning. So that was it for May. So trudging on along to June, the first week of June on June 4th, we have Voracious by Belicia Ria. This is a novella with quite a bit of trigger warnings based on the single sentence I have on it. It says, a pregnant teenage girl with an eating disorder works to reconcile her visions of a doomsday of insect plagues and her unique role in what she fears is the impending bug-filled apocalypse. Now, if you're not new here, you know that I have been seeking out more bug horror, and this one piqued my interest because of that. Now, it does feel like it's going to be a bit heavier, but it is a novella, so I am very curious about this, and I do like the cover. It's cute, although the cover looks kind of like a Greek retelling to me. It gives, like, Greek retelling vibes, but I do like it. But I am curious about this one. I am going to try to seek this one out, especially since it's a novella, quick read. This one is a really anticipated one for me. I am absolutely going to read this one. So on June 11th is Cuckoo by Gretchen Fletcher Martin. And oh, I can't wait to read this. So it says, in the summer of 1995, seven queer kids abandoned by their parents at a remote conversion camp come face to face with it. They survived, but at camp resolution, everybody leaves a different person. 16 years later, only the scarred and broken survivors of that terrible summer can put an end to the horror before it's too late. So I am really anticipating this one because I read Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. That was a really anticipated one for me. And I did not like it. I did not like... I gave it three stars. I didn't hate it, but I didn't like the direction it went. So <laughs> I'm really hoping that this is what I wanted out of Camp Damascus because the whole idea of a horror taking place within or surrounding conversion camp, I mean, that's like real life horrific already. So to kind of create a horror narrative around that, I think is a really interesting idea and it can like open up good conversation. So I'm really, really excited for this one and I really hope that it does what I wanted other books to do with that conversation. Next is one that I am also highly anticipating and I and it's a very popular one. So that is Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay. This is releasing June 11th. I love Paul Tremblay. I already mentioned him in this video actually and I really really like his work. I absolutely adore his writing so I am so excited for this. This is one that I will definitely be reading as soon as I can. So this book is described as an obsessive psychologically chilling and suspenseful twist on the cursed film that breathlessly builds an unforgettable mind-bending conclusion. We have a lot of books recently that are surrounding horror movies and like that kind of genre, that kind of trope, I guess, which I'm not mad about. I actually really like that. This one almost reminds me of Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia, but that one is another one that I did not like and I didn't like the, I didn't like it. So that being said, I hope that Paul Tremblay does it well. I think that he will. I have a good feeling about this. But anyways, let's talk more about what this one's about. So it says, 
Only three of the film's scenes were ever released to the public, but Horror Movie has nevertheless grown a rabid fan base. Three decades later, Hollywood is pushing for a big budget reboot. The man who played the Thin Kid is the only surviving cast member. He remembers all too well the secrets buried within the original screenplay, the bizarre events of the filming, and the dangerous crossed lines on set that resulted in tragedy. As memories flood back in, the boundaries between reality and film past and present start to blur, but he's going to help remake the film, even if it means navigating a world of cynical producers, egomaniac directors, and surreal fan conventions. Demons of the past be damned. So yeah, it sounds like how Silver Nitrate was marketed, but I hope that this is actually good. <laughs> Speaking of horror movies, another one. So on June 18th, we have How to Make a Horror Movie and Survive by Craig DeLouis. This is the author of episode 13, which I have not read, but has been in the back of my mind since it released. So I really need to get to that because the idea of like documentary found footage sounds so good. But this is another one that's kind of like based around horror movies. And this one is described as a darkly humorous horror novel that sees a famous 80s slasher director set out to shoot the most terrifying horror movie ever made using an occult camera that might be and probably is demonic. So this one also gives Silver Nitrate vibes because there's a lot of occult stuff in Silver Nitrate and this mentions occult camera. So another one that very much sounds like Silver Nitrate. Um, I mean, hopefully one of these does it. It would be interesting to read both of these together, like close to each other, because they sound somewhat similar. So I'm very curious to see how these compare to each other and what each author does with that subject matter. So I am kind of interested in reading both of them for that reason. I personally am leaning more towards Paul Tremblay, but that's mostly because I know his writing and I know I like his stuff, but, It'd be interesting to read both of them and then also kind of compare them with Silver Nitrate. The next book is one that I will be buying uh, immediately. I already read it and I loved it and I want everybody to read this book. It's amazing and it's called The Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim. This is releasing June 25th. This has to do with our main character G1 and she is having a tough time. Her and her family's having a tough time. Her parents get divorced and she is kind of left to pick up the pieces of her very much heartbroken, very much fragile mother and her younger sister. During this time, her mother encourages Jiwon to eat a fish eye because it is said to be good luck in Korean culture. After doing this, Jiwon ends up developing a strange obsession with eyeballs and specifically blue eyeballs. And more specifically, the blue eyeballs of her mother's new boyfriend, who is disgusting and misogynistic and fetishizes Asian women. So Jiwon slowly starts to spiral more and more into this obsession and it's very good <laughs> and I really enjoyed the story. So I'm encouraging everybody to read this book. If you like hot girl horror, this is it. And then the last book, I feel like I kind of flew through these. I guess I'll see once I'm editing, but I feel like I went through these pretty fast, so I'm proud of myself. Anyways, also on June 25th, we have a new killer VHS series novella coming out. This is an ongoing series where different authors will write different novellas, and this one is called, I think, Teleportasm, and this is by Joshua Milliken. I have not read from this author before, but this sounds really interesting. It sounds like a goosebumps for adults. So the synopsis says, four friends unearth a unique VHS tape that when viewed causes short distance teleportation with euphoric after effects, inadvertently launching a perilous trend. As copies of the original tape are made, the results become less predictable and ultimately gruesome due to analog generational decay. Despite the danger, some will risk everything for just one more trip. So it's kind of like, almost like a drug-induced euphoria from these VHS tapes. 
And I don't know, that sounds really interesting and I'm really curious about it. So this might be one I have to check out. So those are all the books on my list that I wanted to share with you guys that are releasing in quarter two of 2024. If I didn't mention any of the books that you're anticipating, let me know down below and let me know if any of the books that I did share are anticipated releases for you. If you've already read any of these because you had an ARC or an advanced reading copy, let me know too. Let me know what your thoughts were. I'd love to know. I do feel like this set of releases is a little bit stronger than the first quarter releases. I really wasn't very excited about many of the first quarter releases and the one <laughs> that I was excited for ended up being a dud for me. So I am a little bit more optimistic going into quarter two and yeah, so as always, thank you so much for spending some of your time with me while I sit down and talk about books. If you haven't yet, please give the video a like, subscribe for future content, turn on the bell notification, all the fun YouTube things that help your girl out, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye!